Yeah, I wanted to demonstrate my launch control because it seems to be a pretty popular feature. I don't use it much, well, I don't use it at all for racing, I just use it for showing off. But uh, it's nice to have if I ever wanted to race. Anyways, I want to show off the idle. Here I am sitting at uh, 850 RPM idle, roughly. It fluctuates a little bit, but it doesn't swing back and forth or anything. Um, there's my uh, side exit exhaust. Nice exhaust note at idle. Anyways, there's my boost gauge. I'll just free rev it real quick. Let's get the exhaust again up. Okay. Hopefully the camera's capturing that turbo whistle nicely. Anyways, well, let's hit that launch control. First we'll uh this is my basic settings. It's real conservative. It doesn't hit the uh, it's fuel and spark cut rather than just uh, just uh, spark. So let's just hit this. Okay, here we go. Um, I've got it set for I think 3,800 RPM. See, it almost builds five pounds of boost. Uh, wastegate set at like seven and a half. Here, let's catch the exhaust note one more time. See, all I have to do is have the switch on and floor it. Actually, anything above 10% throttle, I've got it. I've got it set to kick in at 10% throttle. So it works nicely as a. Uh, you can set it like three grand. It's a great uh, valet control rev limiter if you hide the switch. Nobody will be hot rodding your car when they're servicing it. Anyways. Um, down here, that's my uh, closed loop idle control stepper idle stepper uh, count. See, uh, it returns the last known good position, and then when it lights up, that means it's in closed loop mode. And uh, yeah, since I haven't driven it, it doesn't need to change. Um, it's my ethanol sensor, wideband oxygen sensor, I'm graphing it too. Um, gear sensor. Um, it uses a math equation to figure out what gear I'm in. Since I'm not moving, it just goes to the lowest gear. Um, intercooler delta um, and manifold air temperature. It takes the uh, incoming air temperature and subtracts it from the manifold air temperature to get the delta so you can figure out how much the intercooler is cooling your air. It's quite nice. The radiator fan kicks on at 203. It's at 200 now, which is pretty much normal operating temperature. It'll do 196 on the freeway on a cool day, anyways. Throttle position sensor. It's this outer graph, um, and then this this round graph is the uh, tachometer. It's pretty neat. Map sensor. It's this uh, graph on the side. air pressure. Um, it's in kilopascals and once you get used to that I like it a lot better than uh, inches of mercury because you get 0 to 100 or more like 18 to 100 in uh, kPa rather than 0 to 20 for inches of vacuum. So you get more range, more resolution. Anyways, um, I've got a mile per hour graph and a miles per gallon graph. It's a little real-time miles per gallon reading. Here, I'll roll the band real quick. Yeah, that, that one's kind of neat. It reads a vehicle speed sensor. See? Seven miles per gallon there. Came to a stop. It's actual real time miles per gallon. Yeah. Okay, anyways. Um, I'm zoomed all the way out. Factory tech. smooth idle. See now the stepper position is at 22. Okay, let's play with the uh, closed or the uh, launch control settings because I know everybody was interested in launch control. I'm getting distracted here. Um, uh, it's ad advanced engine settings. Launch two step and three step. I don't use it for two step or three step. I'm not even sure what three step is. Burnout limiter. I don't know. I've never used it. It's new to Mega Squirt 3. 
variable launch control. I'm not playing with that either. And uh, you can set this to launch or launch and flat shift, which I guess is what two step is. Um, the fl flat shift is awesome because if you if you're drag racing, you just leave the gas pedal on the floor. When you're pressing the clutch, it drops your RPM automatically, and then you don't have to worry about it revving up and, and shifting really fast. It holds the RPM until you're into the next gear, so you can match the right RPM. Anyways, I've got launch set to 3,800. Let's uh, make it real modest. Let's make it 3,000 and uh, hard cut at 3,150. camera work anyways burn that means save the settings okay now I'm gonna turn on launch control it will be a lot more modest now uh, getting a little bit of smoke oh, my SRT4 turbo is a little tired but it's not smoking that bad yet so I'll keep working it Anyways, next, uh, let's, uh, now that I've got it turned down a little bit more modest, um, let's play with these settings some more. Let's just make it cut spark. This should be, uh, hopefully I don't blow my muffler off. Spark cut only. We'll cut, um, three sparks from seven events. That should be pretty modest. Let's hope for the best. Okay. Launch control is now back on. Here we go. Oh, it was picking up speed. Apparently, we need to cut more events. Okay, we'll make it a little bit more rough. Um, launch. We'll try four out of seven. Burn, close. Here goes. Ooh, some black smoke coming out of there. Well, let's try five. I haven't blown the muffler off yet. Let's keep trying. I've got a uh, turbo muffler on here, so it's it's an actual chambered muffler. So it's very possible for me to blow it off if I fill it with gas and ignite it. Okay, that's all it takes to change the settings. Here we go again. gunfire going on. That's about as rough as I'm going to let it get. As you can tell, it's, it's, you can get pretty aggressive and you can change the settings on the fly to suit your needs. So, anyways, this is Mega Squirt 3. Mega Squirt 2 has most of those launch control settings. And uh, I just wanted to show it off because the uh, Turbo Dodge guys seem to really dig that feature. And uh, you might be able to hack in some kind of launch control into a uh, a custom calibration, but I bet you can't change the settings on the fly like that. So, yeah. Anyways, that's it.